everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storybook Photography, and today I'm going to show you how I achieved this edit. This is the before, and this is the after. I used the Canon R5 in the 200mm 2.0f lens here, and my settings were 2.0f, 320 ISO, and 2500 shutter speed. I took this image at the tail end of golden hour, just as the sun was setting behind the trees, so it made for gorgeous, even lighting. Okay, the first thing I did was open my image into Photoshop, and I'm going to apply the Storyville Touch of Autumn 1. And even if you guys don't like further editing in Photoshop, this preset was amazing. Look at the difference it made. You can just call it a day there. I mean, crap your helper or anybody extra out if they are in your image, but you are good to go. But I'm going to move on to Photoshop and do some more intense editing. Okay, now that I'm in Photoshop, the first thing I want to do is take my children and put them onto this image. I like the foreground a lot better here, but I liked their smiles and stuff over here. Homegirl wasn't smiling on the end, so we can't have that. To do this, I'm gonna take the rectangular marquee tool, select that, and just grab a good chunk of the image. And then I'm gonna hit Command Copy and Command V to paste it on top of the image here. And then I'm going to hit Command-T to move it around where I'd like. I'm going to lower the opacity so I can kind of see where I'm working with and get them kind of lined up a little bit. And that looks good enough to me. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see them. So there we go. I'm going to crank this back up to 100% opacity. Grab a layer mask. Soft black brush, 100% opacity. And I'm going to go ahead and just mask off right here. And now what I want to do is get rid of my hubby's shoulder and add a little bit more pumpkins to this side. So to do that, all I got to do is flatten my image, make another copy of the background layer, Command J, and then I'm going to come over Command T to free transform. I'm going to add a minus in front of the 100 on the width, and then it's just going to flip it over. Oop, got to add the one back in there. There we go. And then I'm going to add a mask, invert it, Command I. And because I inverted it, I need to use a white brush on the black mask and just mask him out of there and add some pumpkins from the other side. There. That looks really good to me before and after. Okay. Now I can go ahead and flatten this again. And I want to fix my daughter's hair. They were running around playing really hard at this farm before it was uh, dark enough to do the pictures. So the first thing I want to do is take the lasso tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and select her little hair here. Copy it, Command-C, paste it, Command-V, and then free transform it, Command-T. And I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit and move it it out a little bit more okay and that looks good to me not as sloppy so before and after and then I'm gonna go ahead and flatten it again command J for a copy of the background layer we're gonna go into the liquidify using this little guy in the corner the forward warp tool I always forget that name I don't know why so it helps when I highlight it and see. And I'm going to poof out her bun a little bit. Messy bun. Tuck that in just a teeny bit. There we go. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you get the gist, guys. And there we go. Okay. So before and after with the liquidify. And now I want to add a sky. Um, so the first thing I want to do is select my subjects. Now there's so many ways that you can do this. I'm going to do it the very easy and kind of <laughs> sloppier way, I guess you could say, because I'm not even going to bother with the blah, bother with the masking right there. I'm just going to come into here and take my quick selection tool and select subjects. And it's going to be a sloppy mask. I'm going to have to go back a little bit, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. So I'm going to hit Command J, and that's going to put them on a new layer. Click under them, and then I'm going to come up to Edit, Sky Replacement. Pull it over 
here so you guys can see. And I had chosen, let me open this up and show you, The Spectacular Sky and number four. Uh, you can add your own skies into here if you'd like. This one worked very good for what I was going for, the look I was going for, so it worked perfect. I'm going to increase my temperature to 70, and that even makes the, the sky blend even more with the pumpkins, which is really awesome. I don't want this foreground lighting, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. Come up here. Oh, I want to add a little bit of a blur to the sky, so I'm going to select that sky, and I'm going to, I have a shortcut, but I'll show you here. You want to go to the blur, Gaussian blur, and then I'm at almost 25% for the radius there, the pixels. And then I'm going to come back up to my um, subjects. Well, let me show you before and after the sky. It really made a statement. I'm going to add a layer mask to the subjects that we cut out and paste it on there. And I'm going to use a soft white brush, actually. No, black brush. Black brush, sorry. And then I'm going to kind of fill it in where the masking messed up just a teeny bit. And I was too lazy to go in and mask it earlier because I knew this was going to be super quick and easy. There we go. Just around the hairlines, really. Okay. And that looks good to me. There we go. Okay. Now I want to add a little bit more dimension and really make my subjects pop out. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this again, make a copy of my background layer, Command J, filter, camera raw filter. Let me shrink this in. Okay. I'm going to go into my presets, Simplicity 3 preset. And I'm going to turn this down a little bit to like, I don't know, 65%. So that's the before and after with the preset. And now I want to increase the luminosity on some of the pumpkins and a little bit of the sky. So again, I'm going to flatten, a lot of flattening this image, guys. Command J for a new layer. Coming into my camera raw filter again. I'm going to hop down to the color mixer in the luminance. I'm going to pull up the oranges to about 30-ish percent, 35. That looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint it on. Um, just the areas that I want. So another layer mask, we're inverting it again, Command I, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm just gonna hit some of these pumpkins. There we go, and that looks good. I'm gonna lower the brush opacity to about 50, 46 is fine, and just Brighten it up a little bit in the sky. Before and after. Now looking at this image right now, my eye is drawn to this part of the pumpkin that my daughter's holding, and I don't like it. So I'm gonna add a layer mask. I have my brush, and I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool and just select the color pumpkin there. And I'm going to click on the white center. Oop, I want my brush completely up. I will adjust in the layer panel. There we go. And then just bring it down a little bit. So you can see a little bit of that through it, but not it's not taking um, the attention away from the subjects. And now I'm going to flatten again. I'm gonna come into my actions panel and I'm gonna run the Storyville Painterly. And then I'm gonna take it down to about, I don't know, 56% looks good. Using a soft black brush at 100% opacity, I'm going to come in and mask off where I don't want it, like the limbs. I like their shirt, the pattern there, so I'm going to keep it on the shirt. There we go. And I love what it does to the stems, and it smooths the pumpkins out a little bit, so I'm going to leave it on the rest. And now I want to do some dodging and burning just a little bit. So I'm going to find my ultimate dodge and burn. Play. I want to brighten up their shirts and darken their pants a little. So I'm going to come into the dodge and burn clothing, extra dodge, white brush because it's a black layer mask. 
And like I say on all my videos, and this includes the sky, when I did that, all of it, make sure that your masking is on point or it's going to look funky. Ignore my sloppiness here. But when I did do the image for the first time and not for the tutorial, I was very careful with my masking. It's just going to make the shirt pop. Make them stand out a lot more. Okay, extra burn. I'm going to take it down to about 49% and just paint on their pants. Okay, and then I want to come into the hair and skin. I'm going to brighten her hand up a little bit there. There we go. We're just going to, we can adjust after. Again, do you see how terrible the halo lo ah, halo will look with the sky? So you take your time, unlike what I'm doing here. Okay, turn that down and slowly increase it to where my eye likes it. It's looking a little dingy there. Okay. And then I want to come into the environment. I'm going to decrease this a lot once I invert it, but I'm going to go ahead and invert it so it will go over the whole image. And I want to brighten it up just a teeny bit. So about 15% eh, looks good. So let me close this all up so you can see the before and after. Before and after. We're almost done. Just a couple more things that I want to do. Um, okay, I want to add some sparkle to the ground. To do that, I am going to go ahead and grab my sparkle one. Let's see if it'll pop up for me. I need to like go through and clear some of my stuff out. I'm going to drag and drop the sparkle overlay number one, um, and I'm going to select soft light, and I'm going to increase that quite a bit. So only the big sparkles are at the bottom there. Okay, and I don't want it to have any color to it, so I'm going to take the hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to click this guy right here so it only affects the sparkle, and I'm going to decrease the saturation 100%. And then I'm going to come here, mask it, invert it, command I, soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm going to just paint it on the areas that I want it. Okay. So that's the before and after. And then I'm gonna grab a new layer. Oops, not in there though, because it's good. I want it on the sky, not just that, um, the sparkle layer. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the white into my sparkle dust brushes. And then you can control this, the sizing using your bracket keys. I've mentioned this in many tutorials. And I'm just gonna add a little bit, a little bit of fun. I like to call it. Okay. And you can adjust the opacity as you see fit. And that does it guys. Um, so this is the before and this is the after such a huge difference. And I hope that you learned something fun and new today. You can find everything I used here over at www.storybillphotography.com. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye guys.